Welcome to Redo by DJSPRC. I want to show you something that it happens often. Well, not really too often, should I say, but it does happen. We have in front of us right now a slash 4x4. The center drive shaft, if you, I'm not sure, I hope you can see it correctly, but if I see how much it moves side to side, okay it's not supposed to at least not that much what we'll do here remove our battery might be able to grab it a bit better here see the way it moves yeah it's not supposed to it should, could move a bit but not that much now one of the things i do know what it is uh it is the motor mount uh one of the other causes usually can be it would be the uh the slipper bearing that holds the assembly uh but i know it's not that part because i changed that already to aluminum one and noticed after the motor mount what it has let's start by removing this cover here This is just a cover that covers the spur. And even here too, I'm moving the complete assembly A to Z. And again, while looking at that, it can still tell you if it's the uh, bearing mount or the physical motor mount. The other thing we'll do here is let's crack it in two. Now there's another screw here. Usually there's two and two on the other side. I already, like I said, opened this one, and when I saw that, I decided to make this video with it. Open both sides, and basically you wiggle to remove your back end of your vehicle. Now let's put the back end aside. Now what you'll do is gently try to pry this out, and sometimes it's it's a little bit harder. Remove your drive shaft. And this is the amount I would usually I, I would suggest it goes because these bearings seize up and basically melts the, the inner bearing holder that's behind here. Uh, and this one was not the case. This was upgraded to the, I think it's 6893, if I remember correctly, the part number. Instead of being a plastic bushing, it's an aluminum bushing. Now, it's going to be a little bit harder for you guys to see here because I can't really bring closer to the camera. But you will notice this part here, which doesn't really want to focus now. But the inner part of the physical motor mount is bigger. If I take the bearing off of this guy and pop it in. And if you, I don't know if you can see it. I'll try to bring it closer, but I got a feeling she may not want to focus. Come on, focus on my hand. There we go. It's, see, it's not sitting correctly in the hole. It's extremely loose and it should be tight. Now we do have a motor mount right here. We're going to open this guy up. And if you see it, this is supposed to kind of snap in. And there's physical no, move, no movement in this guy right here. Now 
that tells me the motor mounted lint guy and this guy is has issues <laughs> let's remove the motor mount in this vehicle let's grab our two mil here and remove the two top screws And do remember, there is two sizes, a smaller one, a bigger one, and this one. And usually what they do is put them forward to me on the side they do come from. 2.5. We're going to remove the motor plate. go put this guy aside and <laughs> I think this car was played in grass not sure let's flip it to make sure everything's out and we do have another screw right here Again, that one's going to be a small one. Make sure it's loose. Now, the two other screws you need to remove, if I could grab the correct screwdriver here, is basically the battery plate. That plate battery holder, should I say? Wiggle that guy out of the way. And again, put the screws in it, put it aside. And we should be able, able to just take this guy out. Just like this. And I'm trying to bring that a little bit closer and hoping it focuses. There we go. And you can see the physical inside is basically eaten up. I'm going to remove the bearing from the other guy here. and be able to put them aside to each other come on there you go if I put that bearing inside this and you physically see it again doesn't sit in correctly and if I put it in this guy here physically see it's seated and stays there. Now it's the best time to flip it again. Try to remove any debris that's left inside. And let's put that guy back in. Grab our two screws here. Put it back in. That's one thing you need to do once in a while on your vehicle, uh, especially on a slash 4x4 or even a stampede 4x4. You'll have the same bearing that holds in your uh, spur and aligns your center shaft, meaning the bearing that goes right here. That I don't know where I put it. I think it's still in the motor mount. That's inside here. <laughs> uh, basically, this guy here, the stock one, will be plastic. And one of the biggest flaws in these vehicles here, those bearings, basically, 
because we're playing in water, uh, snow here in Canada, and mud, name it. And we never think about cracking the vehicle in two and basically lubing the, the bearing up to make sure she stays kind of fresh. And what happens, these bearings seize up. And now we're playing, we don't notice. Next thing you know, that bearing seizes up and the vehicle doesn't turn anymore. And friction starts going in and melts stuff up. Now, especially in this case of this vehicle here, uh, the bearing holder was upgraded. And basically the next step was to melt the motor mount. Now, the other thing you need to do there is a nut inside here that needs to be removed. And sometimes this can go super easy or can go very, a very long process. Like it seems to be a long process right now. The other thing you could do if your motor mount is no good like this guy here. You could basically just cut this open and take your nut out. Now once you have your nut out, back, uh, out Insert it in the other one. Make sure it's seated all the way in. Take your motor. Reattach it. And you'll see your motor here sits in a, a plate on the bottom. A screw, should I say. And grab the correct screwdriver here. Screw it back in, but not fully tight. And lift it, because you'll need to remesh your spur and your pinion together. Just enough, this guy doesn't fall in. <clears throat> Reinsert your shaft. <laughs> Being difficult here. And realign it with your front pinion. You'll see it right here. It's in. It'll stay in there. Take your spur. Pop it back in. While trying to align it with this guy at the same time. That's what I was saying earlier. There is a little bit of movement, but not like it was. It had way too much movement inside. Let's take her back in. Realign it. When you're gonna put it back together, okay. What I do, I put it the two case together and I turn the wheels that way to align it and you'll be able to push it in. There we go. Just make sure there is a notch here. This is not on top of the notch, it's underneath it. If that's on top here, it's not correctly installed. I'll grab our screws right here and screw this back in. I'm only gonna put one, just for the moment, to be able to show you something else here. We're gonna loosen this guy back up. And just gonna realign this pinion here. 
I always try to put them dead center of the spur. <clears throat> okay, now the other thing too, I want to be able to rock the other one. If that's going to be extremely hard to show you here. But I hold my pinion and I'm able to rock it a bit. Now, if I push down a little bit more, I hold this one, I'm not able to rock it anymore. And I'm just gonna, it feels nice. Tighten it up a bit, always checking. And what I do, so now it's a little bit too tight. Doesn't miss. Turn it a bit. That's good. Tighter all the way in. And I always check, double check it. That's good. And basically put back your co your cover here and your all the rest of your screws and you'll be fine. Now if you guys have any questions or comments, post them below. I'll be gladly to answer you. And don't forget to hit that bell notification if you want to be notified next time I upload a video. And don't forget to, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.